chapter 13 is the last chapter for the year. And which means it's also the last chapter for the module. Now, uh, this chapter has only one lesson. And it's about angle properties. So there are three things that we need to remember. That the first is that the sum of the angles of a straight line is 180 degrees. Okay, second, that the sum of the angles of a point is 360 degrees. Okay, third is um, we have what we call vertical angles. And these are the angles that are formed when we have two intersecting lines. So if we have two intersecting lines, the angles that are opposite each other are vertical. So these are vertical and they're also equal. So that means these are also vertical and these are equal. Okay, now the thing that we also have to remember if we're asked to measure the angle, we need to use a protractor. And to have a good measurement of the angle, it's suggested that you extend the angles. So the lines that meet that, that forms the angle so that you can read the angle measurement properly. So again, it depends on what is being asked. So these are the tools that we have learned from before. The only thing that we have to remember now is that we have vertical angles. Okay, so looking at pages 103 to 107 and pages 107 and 109, these are the pages that will contain our problems. Okay. Okay, so let's start with these problems first that deal with the first concept that I said, which is angles of a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So problem 2A of page 103 says XY is a straight line. Find angle Y. So since this is a straight line, we know that these two angles add up to 180 degrees. So to find angle Y, we just subtract 180 degrees minus 134 degrees, which means this should give us 46 degrees. Okay, another problem is 3A on page 104. So it says AB is a straight line. And then it says find angle X. So if this is a straight line, the straight line is composed of three angles. So that's why there's a minus and a minus because to get angle X, we need to subtract the 124 and the 28. So that means 180 minus 124 degrees minus 28 degrees. Okay, if we subtract all of those, we will also get 28 degrees. So is it always the same? No, that's only coincidental. Continuing on to page 107 and 109, I will demonstrate the other two properties that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so on page 107, problem 2A says, find angle T. So this is a point. So around that point is 360 degrees, so meaning a full circle. So here, if we're looking for angle T, that means we start with 360 degrees. Then we gotta subtract that angle. So the fact that it has a mark like that, that means that's a right angle. So that means minus 90 degrees. And then we need to minus our 133 degrees. So again, if we can use the calcul, use the calcul. If they can't, then that means they have to solve this mentally. But the answer should be 137 degrees. Okay, now I stole my graph from earlier and I just put in a few things for problem 1B of page 137. And nine. Okay, so it says angle POR, this angle, and 
blank are vertically opposite. So this is opposite this. So you can call it SOQ. You can also call it QOS because we've learned before that angles could be named differently. Okay, so also it says blank and blank are vertically opposite. So the vertically opposite are the bigger ones. So even if there's a line there, it doesn't create an angle that will allow a opposite angle. So therefore, the two angles that are vertically opposite would be P, O, S, and R, O, Q. But again, those can be called S, O, P, and Q, O, R. So whatever the kids are comfortable with, we can't force them to name the way that we want. We just need to remember that every angle can be named differently. That concludes the only lesson in chapter 13, which also concludes our module, which also concludes our year. I hope you have enjoyed our modules, our teaching techniques, and I hope that you've enjoyed learning and teaching your kids as well. Here's me hoping to see you in our future modules.